let us open our Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 20. Acts 20. You teach us raised from the death. You teach us raised from the death. Acts 20, verses 1 to 6. Paul's journeys. Verse 1. The uproar between, quote, refers to the riot incited by Demetrius, the silversmith of the idol of Diana, and his fellow craftsmen, which saw in Acts 9, verses 23 to 41. But that is not what prompts Paul, Paul's departure. He had already resolved to leave. Timotheus and Arastus are in Macedonia, as in Acts 19, verses 21 to 22. So Paul sets out in that direction. Verse 4, Paul rarely traveled alone. Luke lists several of his companions on this leg of his journey. They represented the different regions of Macedonia that were taking part in the collection of money to be delivered to believers in Jerusalem who were suffering from famine in Northeast Africa. The churches didn't just send money, they sent people to help as well. Verses 5 to 6. The story picks up again with a first person account indicating that Luke had rejoined the group. Tumults uh, or opposition may constrain a Christ follower to remove from his station or alter his purpose, but his work and his pleasure will be the same wherever he goes. Paul thought uh, it why, uh, uh, worthwhile to bestow five days in going to draw us, though it was but a seven days uh, stay there. But he knew, and so should we, how to redeem even journeying time and to make it turn to something, some good account. Acts 20 verses 7 to 12. You, te you teach us restored to life. Verses 8 to 9. A young man named you teach us. He sit on a high window edge, perhaps trying to get some fresh air due to the many lamps burning all night and the warmth of the crowded room. Fast asleep, your teacher falls from the third floor. As a physician, Luke would have been able to confirm the death. Verse 10. Paul throws himself on the body, wrapping his hands around the young man in a scene reminiscent of the Old Testament prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 17 verse 28. One and also prophet uh, Elisha in 2 Kings 4 verse 31, 34 to 35. Just as Peter too, just as Peter's faith in the power of Yahweh had brought uh, Tabitha back to life at uh, the same way in Acts 9 verse 50. So Paul's faith restores life to a uh, teacher's. Verses 11 to 12. Back, Paul returns to preaching and continues until dawn. Afterward, uh, the friends of your teachers take him home and feel immense comfort. Faith can move mountains, faith can raise the dead. So the disciples read and meditated. They read and meditated and prayed and sung apart and therefore kept up communion with Yahweh. Yet they came together to worship Yahweh. And so kept up their communion with one another. 
they came together on the first day of the week, the Lord's Day. It is to be religiously observed by all disciples of Christ through Christians. In the breaking of the bread, not only the breaking of Christ, the body for us to be sacrificed for our sins is remembered, but the breaking of Christ, the body to us to be food and feast for our souls is signified. In the early times, it was the custom to receive the Lord's uh, Supper every Lord's Day, thus celebrating the memorial of Christ's death. In this assembly, Paul preached. The preaching of the gospel should go with the works of the Holy Spirit. They were willing to hear. He saw they were so and continued his his speech till midnight. Sleeping when hearing the word is an evil thing, a sign of low esteem of the word of God. We must do what we can to prevent being sleepy, not put ourselves to sleep, but get our hearts affected with the word we hear so as to drive sleep far away. Infirmity, that means weakness. This word in the scripture means weakness. Infirmity requires tenderness. Face with infirmity when you are a minister, it, it requires to be tender. But contempt requires severity. It interrupted the apostles preaching but was made to confirm his preaching, this case of you, you, you teachers. So the teachers was brought to life again, and as they knew not when they should have Paul's company again, they made the best use of it they could, and reckoned a night's sleep well lost for that purpose. How seldom are hours of repose broken for the purpose of devotion. But how often for mere amusement or sinful reality do we spend our time? So hard is it for spiritual life to thrive in the heart of man. So naturally do carnal practices flourish there. Acts 20 verses 13 to 16. Paul travels towards Jerusalem. Verses 15 to 18, after several days of sailing, Paul and his companions arrive in Miletus. Ephesus is nearby, but Paul had determined not to return. He had spent almost three years with the Ephesians, and the visit would take more time than he had in his disposal. In fact, he wanted to get to Jerusalem by Pentecost. His recent run-in with the silversmith guild uh, may have generated some legal complications as well. So rather than going again to Ephesus, he has the elders of the church meet him in Meletus. Paul hastens to Jerusalem, but tried to do good by the way when going from place to place, as every good man should do. In doing Yahweh's work, our own wills and those of our friends must often be crossed, that means put aside. We must not spend time with them when duty calls us another way. Verses 20 to, to 20, uh, Acts 20 verses 17 to 27. Paul's discourse to the elders of Ephesus, verses 20 to 21. Groups of antagonists are out to smear Paul's good name in, uh, in Acts 17, verses 5 to 9. So he begins by defending the sincerity of his motives and reminding the elders of his personal ministry in Ephesus. 
Paul's reference to teaching, I quote, from house to house, end of quote, may indicate, a, may indicate a number of house churches spread throughout the great city. Verses 22 to 23. Paul continues by sharing his current plans. He doesn't know for certain what will happen, but he is anticipating, I quote, bonds and afflictions, end of quote. That is, in prison, imprisonments and other hardships. Verse 24. Paul views his ministry the same way a runner sees a race. In spite of any obstacles he might face, his goal is to finish the course, to complete the task he has been given. Verse 25. Paul doesn't anticipate visiting Ephesus again, as I said, although it seems that he does uh, later. Elsewhere, he refers to events that appear to have taken place after the one recorded here, as, uh, in, in, specifically in 1 Timothy 1 verses 3 to 4. The elders knew that Paul was not a designing, self-seeking man. Those who want, who want in any office to serve the Lord acceptably and profitably to others must do it with humility. Paul was a plain preacher, one who spoke his message so as to be understood. He was a powerful preacher. He preached the gospel as a testimony to them if they received it, but as a testimony against them if they rejected it. He was a profitable preacher, one who aimed to inform their judgments and reform their hearts and lives. He was a painful preacher, very industrious in his work. He was a faithful preacher. He did not keep back reproofs. A real man of God never, never is not a politic, the politician to be flattering people. Otherwise, you will even uh, contribute to the fall of a good soul, uh, a soul that needs to be to be strengthened by reproof. So he was a painful, he was a, a painful preacher. Very, he was a faithful preacher. He he did not keep back reproofs when necessary, nor keep back the preaching of the cross like, like ministers today they choose to like those who are called the prosperity gospel they choose the parts of the bible who would tell you how to get rich or if everything that is good even the word of satan they wouldn't even say it while all the preaching of the gospel is about the cross it says christ said deny yourself take up, uh, carry your cross, then follow me. You cannot follow Christ, you cannot be a Christian without denying yourself until you are completely humble. Carry your cross like Christ, even carrying the cross of your brothers and sisters. Then you can say that you are a Christian, that means a follower of Christ. So, he was a truly Christ follower, Paul evangelical pro preacher he did not he did not preach mo notions or doubtful manners no no affairs of state or, or or the civil government but he preached the faith and repentance that is the core of what we need to preach repentance and faith because that is what saves a better summary of these things without which there is no salvation cannot be given. Even repentance towards Yahweh and faith towards our Lord Yahshua the Messiah with their fruits and effects. Without these no sinner can escape and with these none will be short of eternal life. Let them not think that Paul left Asia for fear of persecution. 
he was in full accept in full expectation of trouble yet he resolved to go on well assured that it was by divine direction things be uh, to yahweh that we do not know the things which will befall us during the year the week the day which has begun it is enough it is enough for the child of god to know that his strength will be equal to his day paul does not know he would not know what the day before him will bring forth the powerful influences of the holy spirit bind the true christ follower to his or her duty even when he or, or she expects persecution and affliction the love of christ constrains him or her to proceed none of these things move the paul from his work they did not deprive him of his comfort he has all his peace it is the business of our life to provide for a joyful death believing that this was the last time they should see him he appeals concerning his integrity he had preached to them the whole counsel of yahweh as he has preached to them the gospel purely so he had preached it to them entirely he faithfully did his work freely without taking anything from his churches and his followers whether people would bear or forbear acts 20 verses 28 to 38 dear farewell verses 28 to 34 paul reminds the elders that they are shepherds entrusted by the holy spirit with the flock of yahweh wisely he advises them to watch over themselves as well as their congregations soon the flock will come under attack from wolves between courts those who would distort the truth and attempt to lead others astray even some leaders will fall away from the faith as in second timothy 4 verses 9 to 10. so paul warns them to always be on their guard verses 36 to 37. after his farewell speech paul prays for his group and there isn't a dry eye among them most of setting is the elders concerned that they might never see paul again if the holy spirit has made ministers overseers of the flock that is shepherds they must be true to their trust let them consider their master's concern for the flock committed to their charge it is the church yashua has purchased with his own blood the blood was his as man yet so close is the union between the divine and the human nature that it is there called the blood of god for it was the blood of him who is god this put such dignity and worth into it as to ransom believers from all evil and purchase all good paul spoke about their souls with affection and concern they were full of concern about what they would become. Paul directs them to look up to Yahweh with faith and commends them to the word of God's grace, not only as the foundation of their hope and the fountain of their joy, but as the rule of their walking. The most advanced Christ followers are capable of growing and will find the word of grace the, 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 the word of grace help their growth as those who are unsatisfied cannot be welcome uh, guests to the holy god so heaven would be no heaven to them 
but to all who are born again, regenerated, indwelt with the Holy Spirit, and on whom the image of Yahweh is renewed by His Holy Spirit dwelling in them, as I just said, it is sure as almighty power and, and eternal truth, uh, eternal truth make it so. Paul recommends himself to them as an example of not caring as to things of the present world. This they would find help forward their uh, comfortable passage through it. It might seem a hard saying, therefore Paul adds to it a saying of their master which he would have them always remember. I quote, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. End of quote. It seems they were words often used to his disciples. The opinion of children of this world is contrary to this. They are afraid of giving unless in hope of getting clear gain is with them the most blessed thing they can be. But Yahshua tells us what is more blessed, more excellent. It makes us more like to Yahweh, who gives to all and receives from none. And to the Lord Yahshua, who went about doing good. This man was in Christ Yahshua. May it be in us also. It is good for friends when they part, to part with prayer. Those who exhort and pray for one another may have many weeping seasons and painful separation, but they will meet before the throne of grace to part no more. It was a comfort to all that the presence of Christ both went with him and stayed with them. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Let us take this prayer points. Let us pray. Acts 20. If a person is dead and the Holy Spirit allows me, I will go throw myself on the person and put my arms around him and her and, her and pray for resurrection. In the name of Yeshua, if a person is dead, and the Holy Spirit allows me, I will go throw myself on the person and put my arms around him or her and pray for resurrection. In the name of Yeshua, if a person is dead and the Holy Spirit allows me, I will go throw myself on the person and put my arms around him or her and pray for resurrection. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. This applies not only not only on the physical death, but also on the death of the soul. There are many people out there who, who are dead in their soul. We are, the, our ministry is to go like this and take them and help them. Throw all our efforts on him, on the person, and try to get him out of spiritual death. If our good Lord Yahweh permits, the person will come back to life. In the name of Yeshua, if our good Lord Yahweh permits, a person will come back to life. In the name of Yeshua, if our good Lord Yahweh permits, the person will come back to life. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I commit to live the whole time to serve Yahweh with great humility and with tears. In the name of Yeshua, I commit to live the whole time to serve Yahweh with great humility and with tears. In the name of Yeshua, I commit to live the whole time to serve Yahweh with great humility and with tears. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I will serve Yahweh in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my opponents. In the name of Yeshua, I will serve Yahweh in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my opponents. In the name of Yeshua, I will serve Yahweh in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my opponents. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. 
I will not hesitate to preach anything that would be helpful to brothers and sisters. In the name of Yeshua, I will not hesitate to preach anything that would be helpful to brothers and sisters. In the name of Yeshua, I will not hesitate to preach anything that would be helpful to brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. This is the, what we just prayed is our common mistake. We are there. Our mission as a Christian is to preach and to help others. But we always hesitate, thinking the person is going to reject what we're going to say, thinking, thinking, maybe, 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 and finally never preach. Let us pray. I will teach them both publicly and from house to house. In the name of Yeshua, I will teach them both publicly and from house to house. In the name of Yeshua, I will teach them both publicly and from house to house. Thank you, Lord. All to you, glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. I will declare to people of all faith that they must turn to Yahweh in repentance and have faith.